We are continuing our series of year in review interviews with political leaders. It's been a busy year for Alberta's premier. Rachel Notley continued her quest for a pipeline and officially as of today, oil production is being cut to help boost the price of Alberta crude. CTV's Tara Nelson sat down with Notley looking back on 2018. Premier, thank you for joining us once again. Good to be here. It feels like we are ending this year in a different relationship with the rest of the country perhaps than we started the year. How would you describe it? Even as we move forward to make progress with respect to uh, uh, helping the energy industry through the recession that we've been through and, and, and helping them get back to that profitable footing that, that they've had, that we keep having these barriers thrown up against us. And we've been pushing and pushing and pushing and we just have barrier after barrier. And so really, uh, you know, no, we're just pushing and uh, we are standing up for Alberta we are fighting for Alberta we're fighting for Alberta energy workers and uh, fighting for for folks who do rely on the industry uh, for their prosperity and uh, and most of the decision making on this rests with the federal government and in some cases other provinces so we have to stand up for Alberta and that's what we're doing Ottawa has announced this 1.6 billion dollar um, funding package for the energy sector you have been asking for help all year does this do it? it it is what I've called a very small first step of what we hope is much more to come because on its own it certainly does not do it not by any means um, as I said earlier today I mean Calgary has has sort of weathered this storm and been weathering the storm of, of the economic uncertainty in the in energy industry for the last uh, four years and uh, folks here in the city have been struggling uh, worried about their jobs in some cases losing their jobs trying to find more jobs that kind of thing and 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 the reality is though that Calgary you know we we know uh, oil and gas and so it is up to the federal government to listen to us to listen to what we're asking for and so we didn't actually go out and ask for the privilege of getting more in debt a lot of Albertans already today are saying we didn't want a handout we want a pipeline and mm -hmm. I think of a, a lot of Albertans do not feel like the Prime Minister is listening the fact of the matter is on the pipeline you know we're the, we and the federal government are bound by the courts and and uh, so you know the courts have laid out a pathway for how we can carry on with getting that pipeline the the federal government is working to to those uh, instructions that are set out by the courts so as far as the pipeline at this point the only two things that I will say very clearly to the federal government above and beyond what they've already done which to be clear they have been working on this pipeline uh, is that you know we need to make sure that the NEB hits its deadlines its timelines so that by the end of February that we've we've got a certificate there and we need to make sure that the federal government is putting all the resources necessary to appropriately engage with a uh, consult and accommodate the interests of indigenous people you know what we also need then is rail because we are now have a delay that's been put in place by the courts so now we have to look at rail and uh, and we are not delaying government of Alberta it's not our job but we're just not going to delay we're already uh, negotiating Negotiating, but the, that doesn't mean that the federal government can't step in and support us at any point in that process. How confident are you that the Trans Mountain Pipeline is going to get built and when? Well, you know, I'm, I'm still uh, relatively optimistic uh, that, that it will get built. As I've said, the Federal Court of Appeal uh, has distinguished between, uh, you know, the, the work so far on TMX and, and work on other pipelines. And uh, they've also set out a path uh, that can be followed to get it built. Uh, so I, th I see I'm pretty confident that it will get built but the problem is is it's going to be delayed that we know and uh, and because of that delay we now have this issue where uh, we have uh, too much product and not enough uh, capacity to get it out of Alberta and so we've got this problem with the differential which is ridiculous we've got you know ten fifteen dollars a barrel prices for the product that we as Albertans own that makes no sense and we are doing this entirely to ourselves as Canadians and it it costs the Canadian economy 80 million dollars a day and this is not just Alberta's problem this is every Canadian's problem and quite frankly most Canadians now are starting to get that did you ever think when you were elected the NDP NDP premier that you would be the person who was the most vocal fighting for Alberta's oil and gas industry the fundamental part of being a new Democrat is standing up for regular working families and making sure that there are enough good mortgage paying uh, jobs around there for 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 uh, um, everyday people and uh, we know that in Alberta a fundamentally important part of our economy is is uh, 
uh, driven off of uh, a healthy oil and gas industry. So it's not at all surprising we got elected. Uh, just as we got elected, you know, the, the oil price collapsed and a whole bunch of people found themselves out of work. So it's not at all surprising that, that I would spend a lot of time focusing on trying to get people back to work. The other big story this year, of course, is the legalization of marijuana. Other than the supply issues that we're seeing, have there been any big surprises in the first couple of months? You know, not a lot. Uh, I think that you know we've seen heard from some law enforcement officials that that the uh, that that things have been a little bit less chaotic than they had thought, and that there's a fewer problems than they had anticipated. But uh, you know, so far so good. Uh, we're pleased that uh, the AGLC has been able to be so far ahead on this. We've had a lot of people from across the country comment that Alberta is actually well. Ahead ahead of the rest of the country in terms of the work that we've done to prepare for it, in terms of setting up retail, setting up rules, uh, working with licensors, all that kind of stuff. So we actually have more product and more access to the product in Alberta than other parts of the country. The legalization is not an event, it's a process. And uh, we're going to get it right over time. And uh, the long term, the goal is to push, get, get the black mar market out of the system and, and uh, make sure that, we, that people are kept safer and that we uh, get to get it out of the hands of kids and so ultimately that's something that you can do uh, with a legalized system and eventually I think we'll get there. You have not yet committed to a spring sitting of the legislature so what does that mean for the timing of the next election? Well, as I've said all along, I'm going to do a thing that is kind of novel. Uh, one, I'm going to do what I said I'm going to do, and two, I'm going to follow the, the election law. So I said I was going to follow the election law, that's what I'm going to do, and I'm going to follow the election law. So uh, that means that the election will be called sometime between March 1st and uh, March and May 30th. The most recent polls suggest that the UCP is sitting at about 50% support and the NDP at about 35% support. How do you convince Albertans that you deserve a second term? I'm reasonably uh, uh, proud of the efforts um, uh, that all members of my government have put in uh, to standing up for Albertans since we've been elected. So I will be happy to run on our record and also to talk about the, the choices going forward. You know, we have uh, one vision uh, put forward by some opposition parties around, uh, you know, the politics of division, uh, very much fighting against things, and then using that sort of fake populism as a distraction to then turn around, make significant cuts uh, that, in by their own admission, will hurt people people uh, in an effort to give a tax cut to the top 1%. That's one vision. That's uh, uh, sort of rolling back a lot of the progress that we've made on things and, and sort of uh, trying to go back to a different time, I suppose. Our vision is to be for things. We're going to fight for the pipeline. We're going to fight for prosperity. We're going to fight for our public education system, for protecting our public health care system, and for making sure that we finally make progress on diversifying our economy, something we've already been working on, but that we need to do more on. Finally, Premier, what would be your message to Albertans as we end another year, a year which for many Albertans has been another difficult year, people still struggling with finding work and, and having difficulties? What would you say to them? I've been incredibly, again, impressed with the resilience of, of so many Albertans, uh, that we, at the end of the day, we're a province that we need to be focused on having each other's backs, and that uh, our government's going to keep doing that work for them, and that we're going to keep fighting for them. And uh, and uh, I, uh, I do believe that we're going to get there. Uh, we've made a little bit of progress, even with all the, the impediments that we've had come our way this year. Uh, I think we've made progress. We know there's more to do. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, we are not, uh, we, we will not have had a recovery until everyone is feeling the recovery. It's not, it's not a statistical thing. It's not a thing that's just enjoyed by a few people. Everybody has to feel it. And so that's still my job and I'm going to keep fighting to make sure that we get there. Premier, thank you for your time. Thank you.